You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. We are here with Joss Leverett. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. I am so excited to have you. How are you today? I'm doing well. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm in New York. You're a New Yorker. You're in California. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Bring, bring him back the New York, the Brooklyn to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, actually, my, my father's in Bronx. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm their yeah. neighbor. <laughs> so how's it going today? It's going great. So excited to have you on. I just want to do a quick introduction. Uh, Joss is a dog behaviorist and the proprietor for California Canine Solutions. He works with law enforcement agencies in the canine unit, service pets, rescues. This man dedicates his life to his work. And we thank you so much for everything that you do for families and for animals, especially. I am a big, huge animal advocate, so thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. You can see him on Netflix's canine intervention where he shows his skills and they are so effective. Most people cry at the end of an episode. I know I've shed some tears. So, I mean, how does that make you feel, Joss? Well, I, was, I know it was a very powerful show, you know, and, uh, you know, my, uh, my director, Elise Duran, was able to really capture what it is that we do and really, you know, tell a nice story. It's absolutely beautiful. However, canine intervention, it hasn't been picked up for another season as of yet. Uh, so now there is a petition that's going around. It has almost 50,000 people stating that you are an inhumane trainer. Uh, I've seen the show. I don't believe it, <laughs> but I'm just me. We're going to be talking to one of your veterinarians that you work with. And uh, I think you're an amazing trainer. I think you are a very tough trainer and you're going to train a German shepherd differently than you're going to in the canine unit in, in LAPD, let's just say, as opposed to a little Shih Tzu. What somebody said in the petition, um, sure. I have fostered and adopted dogs with behavioral disorders and worked with several different trainers and veterinarian behaviorists. It took just 10 minutes of one episode to horrify me at the concepts and ta tactics Jas the trainer used on the dogs. Shame on Netflix for promoting a self-proclaimed uh, social media star with no real background, education, or qualifications in animal be behavior as a dog expert. You're a husband, you're a father of a little boy, and then you have a little girl on the way. You've de devoted your life to animals. How does this make you feel knowing where your heart is in the right place? Well, the thing is, you know, there's people who are going to be judgment, judgmental. They're going to look at me. They're going to look at my skin tone. They're going to look at my religion. They're going to look at my age. They're going to look at my culture and automatically going to count me out. So, you know, I'm in the trenches. I do this every day. I have tens of thousands of clients in Silicon Valley, you know, um, you know, all type of people who have really changed their lives. And I let my workforce speak for itself, you know. Uh, a lot of these people, they just, you know, they want to uh, uh, throw stones. And a lot of times if you ask them to pull their dog out and show me you know, how would they deal with an aggressive situation that was, you know, a dog that was going to get put to sleep, you know, they would basically just only be able to give you that, that situation to put it to sleep. And with the training approach that we've done, I mean, working with these high caliber police dogs, I, mean, I understand how to motivate dogs better than any purely positive trainer could ever. You know, I know how to get what, what comes out of a dog way better by by understanding the temperaments and drives that I deal with, it's like I can connect with the animals so much better than 99.9% .9 of people even touch a leash. So to hear those kind of things is hurtful, but you know, it's not a surprise, you know, and I'm from a place where, you know, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> you try to build up, they're trying to bring you down. So for me, I don't really get too caught up in the, in the negativity. I just try to stay focused on my work. That's right. And you have your own business, uh, Canine Solutions. Cal in California. Is California, this hurting? Yeah. Um, can you pronounce the whole, the, the correct name of your 
Oh, California Canine Solutions, aka. Oh, thank you. Is this hurting your business at all, or are people supporting you? Oh well, absolutely. I mean, we've created our own petition, a counter petition. I mean, clients know, viewers know. You know, I have so much support. You know, I mean, we were able to put together fifteen thousand signatures in just a matter of two days for people who, you know, want to think that they can sign petitions. We can sign petitions too. I mean, you know, this is just a cancel culture is getting out of control. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, you know, it, of course, it's going to have some effect, but at the same time, you know, there's more people happier than, than, than not. So, you know, I just stay focused on those who want to see us do well and, and, and who want to improve the dog uh, culture and uh, well-being of dogs overall. I mean, some people can uh, take training and uh, using collars out of context, but in reality, you know, we use horses, use, use bits and, and, and bridles and dogs use collars and there's certain dogs, you know, and collars we have to keep on a dog just for the safety of the handler especially when they come from a dog that's been in an abuse situation. Um, so a lot of times, again, tapping into the same motivational drives, a lot of times we're speaking a lot of the same language, uh, but you know, again, some of these people, they just will freeze up and, and hate you for anything you do. So I just understand that, that that's part of life. You know, people can say all oh, the celebrity this and that, but it's like, I've been training dogs right in Silicon Valley, you know, from, from the time I was a little boy, you know, and I grew up in Oakland training dogs all the way up to now. It's like, I've been training dogs literally since I was 11 years old. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's 27 years in the, in, in the, in the, in the bank. <laughs> you that's know, awesome. So, you know, I tell people, you know, to hear somebody who starts a petition who has one year training experience, they're a dog walker. I mean, it's really like pathetic, really, but you know, it this, really this, is. this is America or this is where this is the world we live in. And don't forget, there's a lot of racial injustice and things going on with, you know, people not, you know, religions and things like this. So you never really know people's motivation. And again, I don't try to, uh, you know, play that card at all, but, you know, the real reality is that people are very hateful in this world. And, you know, we just came off of a time where it was a very hateful time in the country. And a lot of these people are still brewing up their hate, you know, so it's like you have to just acknowledge that and we have to stay moving forward in a positive direction. I want to touch upon some of these comments that people wrote about you, um, saying how wonderful you are. One of your viewers wrote, finally, an educational show to watch with the family. We cannot wait to see more. Uh, this show is amazing. It's not only informative for fellow dog owners, but it also highlighted the stigma attached with certain breeds and how all dogs just want to be loved and trained properly. It also highlighted how intelligent, loyal, and loving dogs are. Uh, especially when the dog who previously killed another dog who was given a second chance, he was so obedient and you can tell that he just wanted to be loved. Are you familiar with that story? Uh, can oh, you tell absolutely. us about that, please? I, absolutely. Absolutely. So I was a young dog at uh, the, the rescue uh, in episode six and uh, <laughs> that dog, we call him Humpy for, uh, for, for short because he was just like, he had a, a uh, drip. He just always wanted to just like, uh, uh, you know, hump. He's very dominant. <laughs> what happens is we ended up, um, you know, he supposedly killed another dog. Guy, I guess he got into another kennel at the rescue. They, you know, and he was, you know, I wanted to take him. And I realized that his main issue was that he was just insecure. And he would basically fight for survival. You know, he just would fight out of fear, you know. And then if you get in a kit, you know, in a kennel with another dog, uh, and there's all this rambunctious, crazy behavior going on at the kennel. So it just in inserts a whole nother energy into the dogs that they normally wouldn't even have. Uh, and this dog basically, you know, he killed a dog, but I was trying to pick four dogs that would help take, reduce the numbers uh, at the rescue. And we were able to uh, pick an all black dog, a dog killer, another dog that was in there with another dog that was potentially going to do damage to this dog in case they got in a fight over food or something. And then a uh, little dog. And we took all four of them, and that dog in particular was just, you know, he was very fear-based, you know, and that, uh, but we built confidence, and he's, you know, to this day, you know, he was ended up socializing in daycare, and he's with one of our uh, handler who rescued him, and, you yes. know, everybody's, you know, really happy with, uh, you know, the dogs and where they are. It's just, just got to give them a shot and give them some direction and some, and some uh, structure. Right. Um, Did you ever stop a dog fight at all, Joss? You ever stop a dog? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, it comes from time to time. Dog gets loose, you know, dog breaks the position or, mm. you know, two dogs, some one handler, sometimes a group class might not be paying attention and they get dogs get too close. So, yeah, you definitely, and, and you, you know, yeah. you, that can be, that's, I wrestled four years of varsity wrestling and there's nothing like trying to stop, a, you know, two large breeds from really, you know, trying to, you know, fight and get it on it's it's it's, it's, really it's, a, a, it's a scary situation i've yeah. seen a dog fight before yeah, have, yeah. You, have you ever stopped like a dog fight like you've seen a group of people doing it for money well the thing is, is like i don't even really surround myself in those kind of circles sure uh, 
you know, it can be dangerous. You know, a lot of times, you know, people, you know, who are involved in gambling and, and a lot of uh, extracurricular activity. So for me, I, you know, I don't, I, I influence people to not be a part of anything like that. Like I don't entertain those conversations. I'm anytime I hear, it, I'll, I'll speak against it and how, you know, it's just, you know, a lot of times it's misinformation and sometimes people, you know, it, through, through, you know, different uh, uh, lifestyles, you know, it's just part of, you know, it's, it's some, some people are desensitized to it. It's just normal. Yeah. Like, how they grew up and what they were around growing up. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, but I mean, the thing it was, it's not like, you know, type of times people try to, you know, pin it on like black or brown races when in fact it was actually something that was brought from Europe, you know? So it was just like, that's just the history of it. You know, it's just, sure. you know, uh, uh, over time, you know, uh, with the, with the Staffordshire Terriers and the Pitbull Breeds, all these dogs, they all were, you know, bull baiting and doing it for one, for one reason or another, they were set, sending dogs on each other or on other animals. And it's just, you know, it's just something that is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very, uh, dark past, but it's still, it's something that we can't ignore. Like it's something that's been going on for a long time and dogs were bred for this. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we have to try to just discourage and educate people about. Yeah, we should bring awareness to it, though, because it, it does happen all the time and it, the animals do get hurt. Uh, I wanted to bring another comment in. Uh, somebody had said, it's nice that we have an African-American lead by example. We need more of that. And so I saw in one of your posts that you emphasize the importance of leading by example. And you state that you can be doing a million other negative things, but you choose to find your purpose. So tell us about, uh, tell us how you lead by example and your new project that you have coming up, please. Well, the thing is like, uh, once you create something, then I feel like you're just supposed to pass it for, you know, like pass it on or at least like, you know, spread that love, you know? And, uh, you know, one thing with building Cali Canine, I was able to employ who I want to employ yeah. and, and give opportunities to who I want to give opportunities to. and. You know, it's really great to see guys who might have a trouble pass or rough pass or, you know, uh, who wouldn't have ne necessarily uh, got these kind of opportunities. And, and, and really now we're trying to take it to another level to where we're like empowering, you know, the young guys coming up. And, you know, uh, you know, it, it, for example, like I have a good buddy of mine, you know, in, in, in his football practice, someone, you know, one of the dads, you know, murdered the other dad right on the football field. And it was like, we need a place for our young people, especially in the Oakland community, they can go and they can, you know, uh, uh, get financial literacy, you know, proper nutrition, education, you know, proper scholastic and spirituality inspiration, and, you know, really have a place where they can have big brothers who are examples, you know. So uh, my brother's one of them, uh, you know, Andre, uh, he's, a, he's a firefighter. Steve, he's a real estate broker, you know. Um, Jeremiah is a venture capitalist. Uh, you know, he seeks uh, uh, funding for uh, African-American or, or minority businesses and you know myself being a dog trainer we kind of came up with this idea to say hey well you know we need to have something where we can you know show these these youngsters because they're already coaches but it's bigger to just be a coach so they're really devoted to be a coach but it's like all right they need more than just how to play football and how to re read a play they have to know how to really run a play in life you know so they're teaching them e-commerce and teaching them seo and teaching them how to build websites and these are things that we want to have a program that's going to empower these guys so we have a called the underdogs program we kind of you know came up with it as uh you know we helping rescue dogs as well as the youth you know and then part of that is to you know build awareness to our youth program through the rescuing dogs and rescuing dogs through our youth program and you know it's just kind of like something that we can give back to the world you know uh, one thing about myself and my director was said we we're going to keep it organic you know at the end of this pandemic uh, we filmed it right before the pandemic, right? We actually shut down our last film day because of the pandemic. Right. And we wanted to give the world something beautiful, you know, with all this hate going on in the world and with the presidency and all that stuff. We wanted to really come through with something that was going to like give a lot of light to people. And I feel like we did exactly what we did. We wanted to do, we accomplished what we wanted to do. But again, some of this negativity has kind of tried to steal some of that light. Sure. You know? The reality is, is like we know that we're coming from the heart and everything that we're doing and helping people and helping dogs. And we know like, you know, certain dogs, they need a, a balanced approach. And I think you have to expose dogs to the environment and the stress and get them used to, you know, tolerating the world. It's like, you know, you can't be somewhere in the country. If you gotta be in New York City, you gotta be able to get on the subway and you have to be able to walk down this dark street and you have to, you know, and it's just, right. this is like city life and dogs need that too. They need to be exposed and they need to be pushed and, and to be stronger and make, you know, and be able to uh, tolerate. Cause eventually, you know, if they don't and they'll just keep hiding, hiding, hiding until one day they snap bite and now they get deemed dangerous and now they get put to sleep. So 
Our whole goal is to reduce, reduce euthanization, reduce incarceration, empower our people, you know, from all walks of life. And that goes for anywhere, black, brown, white, green, whatever you're about, you know, yeah. like it's all love. You know, we want to just like uh, motivate people and just like we motivate the dogs for figure out what makes them tick and then, you know, channel them in the right direction and make sure we have the proper outlets, you know, whether it's in human behavior or dog behavior. Yeah, you, you're a very positive uh, influencer and thank you so much for what you're doing uh, to help this world and make a difference. So this is why I have you on this program. I, I really like you. Thank you very much. Uh, you started training horses. We plan on doing a segment uh, regarding horses and therapy. How did horses affect you in a positive way? Oh, well, horses were really cool. You know, one thing my mom never really kept me around away from the animals. And then, you know, one cool thing about it, there was like ranches in the Oakland Hills. A lot of people think like Oakland is just like a real just grimy town. There's beautiful places. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world, you know. And one thing about the Oakland Hills, they had the horse ranches and stuff like that. So I was able to actually, you know, experience horses, work with horses and be able to uh, uh, understand some basic foundations of like, you know, uh, uh, guiding horses and, you know, and building confidence in horses and the horses are kind of a different kind of animal because they're scared of things. So a lot of times you have to kind of like push them through and help them through things. And that really helped me with the dogs. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing here with the dogs. And, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, it, so many things are so hand in hand with that, you know, and, and, and it just was a great experience. It allowed me to uh, have a great uh, foundation for getting into dog behavior training. Nice. And tell us about the dog that inspired you when you were young to become a dog trainer. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Sinbad, yeah. So this is Sinbad. I got him actually tattooed on my arm. Uh, Sinbad is, uh, he's, 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 you know, he was like this just confident, powerful, you know, and then, you know, I live with my mom's single mom, you know, single parent household. Yeah. I like having that security. And Sinbad was just such a, he was such a brave heart, you know, and, and I loved him. And, uh, you know, but he had this issue with dogs and it was always like a couple of times where it wasn't my, my fault necessarily, like a dog would just be out, you know, and anyway, he wasn't under control or something. So I guess it kind of was my fault, 15, 16 years old, running around with the dog. And he got a couple of scraps and it just, you know, like I said, got one too many. And I kind of had to make that responsible decision. We'll go put him to sleep. And sure. it, was, it was tough, you know, but the things I was trying to fix, I wish I knew how to fix. And a lot of people wish they knew how to fix. And now it's like, I got the cheat codes and I'm just bringing them to the people. And it's yeah. because of my experience dealing with police dogs and canines and protection dogs. And that all is like a whole world that it stays up here unless you can go get it and then bring it down here. Cause otherwise, right. you know, and because I'm an athlete, because I did all these things, I was a decoy protection uh, decoy where I'm the guy who gets bit. And when you're that guy, then you get to be around all the hot shot dog trainers cause they need you, you see? So then I was able to take that information and then use it, get in every, you know, give it to everybody, you know, and a lot of times that's what we're doing with dogs. We're socializing and building confidence, just like a social, like a, a service dog or a working dog. It's the same concept. So we're just taking that world and then bringing it to the pet world and, 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 and taking our pet world and just tightening it up because now people are taking their dogs more places. Yes. And, you know, and if the dogs need to be well behaved, you know, and a lot of times dogs are not and people are just quick to go run and hide and try to hide them and run in their hotel room or with, you got to acknowledge the fact that people need proper education. You know, they're being misinformed by people. They just think you're supposed to just run from it. And it's like you conditioning your dog to be able to, you know, like purposely giving your dog, uh, uh, you know, confidence through training, you know, 15 yes. minutes of training of just giving them that structure. You know, I don't care if you don't do one correction in your training, 15 minutes a day are the proper trainers going to give your dog structure. And that's what we're preaching. You know, how, what, what dog needs what kind of collar, or, you know, all that. That's, that's, that's not the, really the point. The point is we're getting 15 minutes a day. And like I said, we're motivating through rewards, toys, food, treats, kibble, meat, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Everything the dog likes to do. Like the, my training style is all about the, the fun, the break, the play, the game, you know, gamifying the whole process is fun for the whole family. So, yeah, that's, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are just until they hear you say it, until you have to like, you know, um, yeah, you know, really, really uh, hear you out, you know, but a lot of times people just kind of jump to conclusions, you know, like they had a, a picture of me, another picture, I'm sorry, of Caesar Milan, and Caesar Milan, his muscles up like this, and two little dogs, and I'm scared, and me too, and it's like, this is how you're introducing me to the world, and like, I come through like, with the treats and the box, you know, I've seen how I could, how I do it. And that's where they actually their their movement got kind of quiet. They still got people who are still trying to like, you know, keep it going. But once they see what it is, I mean, they can't really like, 
it's, it's right there in the open. So I wish I had your program. My dogs rule my world. I have two Shih Tzus. I have a Shih Tzu Maltese and a little puppy Shih Tzu now. And they rule my world. Like I'm, I'm just the person who pays for everything and take, it's really sad. I love them. They're wonderful, but I can't have a dinner here. You know what I mean? I can't invite, uh, you know, a friend. <laughs> I mean, I can, but they'll be all over them. Yeah. If so you're in the New York area, you met Metro Dog Training. That's my brother. That's my brother company. Uh, Twally Rollins, you guys contact Metro Dog Training. If, uh, he's in the Williamsburg area, but he travels and uh, he's excellent. I'll be doing a, a, a tour in New York for all my New York people. It's going to be in the first couple of weeks of May. Oh, so we're, nice. We're lining up uh, the venue. So just check out Cali Canine for that, as well as my socials. And uh, we'll have a, 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 work, a seminar plus a, a workshop. So for people who want to just come check it out, and then some people who really want to get involved, they can bring their dog to the workshop the next day. So Thank that's coming. And, uh, I'd love to have you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'd love to be there with my two little rascals here. We're yeah. going to mention this at the end of the program uh, of you coming into New York City, and we're thrilled about that. Thank you so much. You're coming back home. So Absolutely. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Just to touch upon your box training. I find that very fascinating. So my box training is all about establishing a place command, a place, and you want your dog to love their place and understand that like that's a, that's a safe place, that's a comfortable place. So once we establish the place and the focus on the place, then we can teach to sit down, stand on the place, we recall into the place, we recall from the place, we heal from the place, we heal to the place, you know? So you really just build up this whole value of the place is like itself, it's by itself or it's with you, you know? And, and the thing is like, you just condition the dog that, um, you know, this is just, it's just a teaching tool, really. It just makes it easier for the dog to learn. And, uh, you know, yeah, we, cre we create, we create a, a high value for it to where it's like, when you bring the place in, in the picture or you start training period, the dog is just all fired up about it because good things come from training. Thank you. And what celebrities have you worked with? I know that you work with Kevin Hart and uh, Jason Derulo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jay, uh, Jason Derulo, Kevin Hart, Steph Curry, uh, Michael B. Jordan, um, man, I mean, so many people, uh, so many ball players, Patrick Willis, Vernon Davis. I like the quotes that you have. I'd like to mention some of them. There are no bad dogs, just uninformed owners. 15 right. minutes a day keeps bad behavior away and yeah. take his or her energy and make it constructive, not destructive. <laughs> I like that very much. Hey, I'm glad you cut those. No, those, those are things that I try to really like, because you know, with people, sometimes you got so much information coming, you want them to like stuff that's going to resonate. You know, you say yeah. you got to treat a dog like a human or treat you like a dog. You can take a dog out the pack, but you can't take the pack out of the dog. So these are things that really hit home. Like, oh man, you know, I'm humanizing this dog and this is why he's doing it. It's like, duh, you know, are you saying like he's doing, <laughs> he's being, you know, he's, he doesn't respect, he's not listening because, you know, he's, they're not really enforcing anything you know so it's like you know you force things with the kids you enforce things with people at work you enforce things if you're in the military and it's not about being like dominant or, or like over assertive about it it's just about being the proper leader you know and it's like uh in today's age you know you have to just you know leadership is not about being uh harsh it's about just being fair but firm you know and whatever the rules i have to stay the rules and it is i mean consequences come with life you know what i mean but you know you could take away something from somebody and that's still considered punishment you know and that's right. a way you can train with punishment without doing any adversive techniques so that's the thing like these are all things that uh we cover every aspect of the behavior you know and it's when you understand everything you, you only do what's necessary you know and, and same thing goes with with like your colleagues at work you don't want to over correct or send someone home for a whole year of fire i mean they're just, just something small but it has to be acknowledged otherwise it's going to yes. build up and it'll continue to progress so it's just behavior science there's nothing you know way you can get away with it so back to the first thing you said in this interview like people come with all of this it's like now you, you can know all of this stuff but you can't do it with a dog and you can't relate a message to the people you're useless you're just a bunch of text uh you know, information that, that hasn't been applied. Please head over to www.callyk9.com to find out when Joss will have his workshop at Metro Dog Training in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. That's C-A-L-I-K, the number nine, dot com. Be sure to join us as we continue this segment tomorrow, Sunday, April 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we talk with veterinarian Dr. Keith Harper and conduct a Q&A with Joss. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Melissa Billy Clark Show. Together, we can make a difference. Are you looking to better your life but need a little more motivation? 
Contact leadership and life coach Ben Pappas at coaching at benpappas.com. That's coaching at B-E-N-P-A-P-P-A-S dot com. When Dogs Fly is a coloring book for adults and a meditation guide, it can help you distress your life. Pick one up at Amazon today. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe.